Hey, James here from GoodGuitarist.com, and welcome back to our bar chord mini series. Last week we learned the most common shapes, E major and E minor, and this week we're going to learn a couple more shapes, and more importantly, we're going to learn how to navigate the fretboard, how to bring those shapes all the way up and down. Because really, bar chords are movable chords, that's their biggest strength. So we need to know where to move them to. Um, if you tune in next week, we're going to learn proper technique and how to play bar chords for longer and how to play bar chords safely in a way that makes them really easy so you won't hurt yourself. Anyways, let's get going. So we're going to start out to make the A chord shape doing the same thing that we did with the E shape. So normally we play our A shape like this and we want to spare our first finger or we want to save it, I mean, for later. So we're going to use these three fingers instead. And then we can drag the shape up, lay down the bar, and just move that shape around. Now, this shape, when you get really high up, these three fingers get kind of squishy. It's really tough to kind of fit them all in. And I find I get a lot of wrist tension when I'm playing with that shape high up. Um, so instead of using this one, we can actually just bar the shape. And that's just this A chord. Same three notes. We're just playing them with one finger. And since we need to save this finger for later, let's use our third finger to do it. And then we can move the shape up. So no matter what shape you choose to use, whether it's this one or that one, we have to learn how to drag it up. And when we're bringing it up, we move the shape, we move the open strings, we get our chord shape. This is our movable bar chord shape for the A major shape. In the same way, when we use the capo for E, same deal here, you know, we can play our A chord with our other finger, replace the capo with our index, and we get a movable bar chord shape. And this one is D. Here we have E, F, G. We can count up, there's A flat, a whole bunch. Now, how do I know that? Did I just memorize all the chords up and down the fretboard? Well, in a way, yes, but I didn't intentionally do that. At first, I learned a simple trick that allows you to tell where you are on the fretboard. It's a really easy way to navigate the fretboard that doesn't involve memorization at all, aside from one key thing. But first, I need to explain a little bit about how the musical alphabet works. So, with the musical alphabet, you get A, B, C, D, E, F, G. That's the first seven letters of the alphabet. And once you get to G, the whole thing starts all over again. So you get this like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G thing that goes on it forever in both directions. You know, you can always go lower and you can always go higher. Now, we can apply that to a string and we can count up the string with the alphabet. So. Let's just do this on the A string, the fifth string, because it starts with A. It's really simple and not very confusing at all. So we start with A, and we can go A, B, C, D, E, F, G. We get up to A, and that's how you can figure out all the notes on a single string. Now, if you notice, sometimes I would, I would skip a fret. So from going C to D, I would go up two frets, which is also called a whole step. That's a whole step. But sometimes I would only go a half step, or I would just go up one fret, like from B to C. Now, this is the only thing you need to memorize, and it's that B and C have nothing in between them. You just go straight from B to C, and E to F. That's it. So B, C are right beside each other, and E and F are right beside each other. Otherwise, you always have to skip a fret. So if I'm going from D to E, I need to skip a fret because I'm going. I'm not going from B, C, E, F. Those are the only notes where they're right beside each other. Now, what is it in this gap? That space is where the sharp and flat notes go. Now, this is a D, for instance. And if we go one higher than D, we get D sharp. So that's D. That's D sharp. If we go one lower than D, so D, we get D flat. So flat, you go one lower. Sharp, you go one higher. And the cool thing about the sharp and flat notes is they actually have two names each. And that's because they're in between two notes. 
Here's D and here's E. If I go up from D, I get D sharp. And if I go down from E, I get E flat. D sharp and E flat are the exact same note. They're enharmonic equivalents. And all that means is that we can call them either one depending on on the context. You know, if we're in a certain key, we would call it a sharp. If we're in a certain key, we would call it a flat note. And if you're really interested in that, we can get into it another time. But for now, um, it's really important for you to know because you're going to run across songs that have a B flat chord or that have a C sharp chord. And it's super duper simple. You just find B, just go down one fret and you get a B flat chord. And now that we know the names of the notes, it's super simple to apply that to the bar chord shape. All you got to do is line up your bar finger with the note that you want. So for instance, say I want to play a B chord using the E major shape. So with the E major shape, our root is on the low E string. So that's the only string I have to be considerate of. I don't have to think about the rest of them at all. And I know that B, thanks to my counting, is up here at the seventh fret. I just count it up. E, F, G, A, B. Now I line up my finger, I bar on that fret, I have the E major shape here, so it's gonna be a major chord, and my finger lines up with B. It's a B major chord. Now if I remove this finger, I'm playing a minor shape, but my finger still lines up with that B, so now I'm playing B minor. So with the E shape, we wanna know the name of the note on the low E string, but when we're playing the A shape bar chord, we want to know the names of the notes on the A string. So let's just try one there. Let's say I want to play a D chord using this A major shape. Well, I would count out my string, A, B, C, D, line up my finger, make my shape. So this is the A major shape, and that's a D major chord. Since we're already on the topic of the A string, I think now is a really good time to learn one more bar chord shape that uses that string. And we've already learned E major and E minor along the E string. So I'm betting you can guess that since we just learned A major that we're gonna learn, yeah, A minor. Now, the one catch with this one, it's not as easy as changing from E major to E minor. Um, as we learned in part one, changing from the E major bar chord shape to the E minor is super simple. All you have to do is just take off one finger. Well, changing from the A major shape to the A minor shape is a little bit different. We have to really change the fingering, but it's actually a pretty simple shape. So let's figure this out the same way we figured out everything else by making our chord shape. And this is A minor and it's rooted on the A string, the fifth string. Now, our first step is to free up our first finger. So we're gonna play our chord like this and you might recognize this fingering. It's the exact same one that we used for the E major shape at the very beginning of this whole series. So this is the first bar chord that we learned, except instead of playing it here, we've just moved everything over that way. Let's take this chord shape up two frets now, lay down our finger, and here we have a B minor chord. And you should know that because B is on the second fret when we're counting up A, leave a space, B. Now here's something that's really cool, and this is kind of another way to think of this shape. So we learned the E major bar chord shape in part one, and we can play it all up and down the fretboard now. So let's play it at the fifth position. So we just have our E shape, we took it up. Well, if we just move this entire chord shape that way, we get the A minor shape. The shapes are so similar, just like moving an E chord to an A minor chord. We can do the same thing with our bar chord shape. Pretty cool, eh? All right, so we figured out two chord shapes, the A major shape and the A minor shape. But more importantly, we figured out how to navigate up and down the fretboard so that we can put all these chord shapes to use. Well, now that we kind of know what we're doing as far as where to play and what to play and where all this stuff comes from, the only thing we have left to do is to perfect the technique and figure out the physical aspect of it. So tune in next week. We're going to go over um, a bunch of exercises and ways to make your bar chords sound better and to make them way easier to play. Also, there's an article down below. You'll find a link down below, I mean, um, 
that goes to our website and that's where you'll find all the play alongs and a whole ton of practice material so that you can really work your way into bar chords. Anyways, we'll see you next time.